Just over 10 years ago, one of the most remarkable moments in the history of Southern California when the space shuttle Endeavor arrived and made its way through the streets of South Los Angeles to its home at the California Science Center. Now, a decade later, it's making another move just you know, that, that many feet away uh, as it's placed in the Samuel Ocean Science Center. That's a 20-story facility being built at the California Science Center for the final configuration, the launch configuration of the Space Shuttle Endeavor. A lot happening in that regard this month. Jeff Rudolph is the president of the California Science Center, which is a jewel in the crown uh, of, uh, of this state and the city. Jeff, nice to see you. So um, behind behind you is uh, is part of the shuttle launch configuration and it's going to be moving uh, very soon. Describe what's about to take place. Um, over the last six months or so, we installed the solid rocket boosters in the new Samuel Ocean Air and Space Center midway through construction. And those are there now. They're mounted to the ground or the seismic isolator as if they were on a launch pad. The next piece is this big orange tank, the external tank, which carried all the propellants uh, for the space shuttle's main engines on launch. We are next week moving it from its temporary location over here down to the construction site and then weather permitting lifting it um, with a 450-foot crane up and over the current construction and into the building uh, to mate it to the solid rocket boosters that are standing there now. And, and that's the only one left. I mean, you, you've got your hands on, on the only actual uh, remaining of those tanks. That's true. The external tank was the major expendable component of the space shuttle. The rocket boosters and the shuttle itself, Orbiter, were reused. The external tank uh, carried those propellants till you got to orbit. It was jettisoned and then it would burn up on re-entry. This one tank that is flight ready was the one that was not used during the shuttle uh, flight campaign. And so we were able after a couple of years of talking to NASA about it to, to secure it and they, they gave it to us and we're thrilled because it means our space shuttle stack will be the only, only authentic stack in the world. Uh, it, 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 it truly remarkable, frankly. The credit goes to you, Ken Phillips, the, uh, uh, the aerospace curator at the, um, at, at the Space Center, the Science Center, I should say. So the, the shuttle itself, where is it and when are you going to move it? It is in the building right behind that, the, the, right behind the external tank. Um, it's there now. It's actually already been wrapped. Uh, we're shrink wrapping it to protect it once it's on the construction site. And the wall of the building is already coming down because we have to take it out through a wall of the building that we removed. It will move just uh, a couple of weeks after the external tank. So we're looking at late this month as our target. And the, uh, the, the geometry of all this, from what I understand, is different than, I mean, no, nobody has done this outside of a NASA facility. Do I have that right? It, you have it absolutely right. It's incredibly challenging. This has been, a space shuttle stack's never been put together outside of a NASA facility. Uh, and those are facilities really built, and the space shuttle built with them in mind, with an indoor facility, uh, one of the biggest buildings in the world, the vehicle assembly building. Uh, bridge cranes, platforms that come out to access any point they need to. We're doing it here essentially out in the open air with a couple of big cranes with scaffolding all the way up so that our crew can get to it. So it's an amazing engineering challenge. We have a great team of uh, almost a dozen people that all worked on the space shuttle program for decades that are, are helping us make it happen. And when do you hope to have the entire facility finished with the space shuttle in its launch configuration, which I can tell right now is going to be a stunning thing to see? It's going to be an only place in the world to see it, an amazing sight and an inspiration to everybody. Uh, we expect to have the shuttle stack done in just a few weeks now, really, and then we'll cover it up and protect it during construction. Um, the building itself we expect to complete in 2025, and then after that we have to install a number of other artifacts, aircraft and spacecraft, um, both future and, and past, and a whole bunch of hands-on exhibits as you'd expect in the Science Center to to really 
uh, provide interactive experiences that tell the story of, of science and engineering and how we get into space and how we fly through the atmosphere and what we've learned. Uh, and finally, this is all part of the, of the larger mission. Uh, that you have been uh, heading for oh so many years now. Uh, it, tell us about that and, and, and what is the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is to stimulate curiosity and inspire science learning in everybody. We want people to understand science, to see that it's relevant to their lives, uh, and to, to think about um, being better citizens, understanding the science that affects us in, in every way, and to think about careers and, and further education in science. Uh, and uh, that resonates now more than ever. Uh, Jeffrey Rudolph is the president of the California Science Center. I've often said that if, uh, if Leonardo da Vinci were here, Galileo, Thomas Jefferson, uh, they would all be members of the California Science Center. Uh, listen, uh, thanks very much and good luck uh, this, the next few weeks. Conan, thank you so much. I do have to put in a plug because you brought up Leonardo da Vinci that in March we'll open an exhibit on Leonardo da Vinci, artist, dreamer, inventor. Well, well there you go. It all ties in. I told, and and we'll, you'll have on display his membership card. Uh, uh, Jeff, thank you very much for taking the time. <laughs> thank you very much, Conan. Well, that's some final comments after this.